appreciators. This week we're going to explore the art of landscape painter John Constable. He was born on the 11th of June 1776 and lived until the 31st of March 1837. He is recognised as one of Britain's greatest artists and his paintings offer some of the most iconic scenes of the English countryside. Today we're going to look upwards and focus upon the way that Constable has depicted the sky through his art. John saw landscape painting as a way to capture the familiar scenes that inspired him. He felt a true connection to nature and claimed that it was more important to focus upon observation rather than imagination when composing an artwork. Constable is quoted as saying, when I sit down to make a sketch from nature, the first thing I do is try to forget I have ever seen a picture. This suggests a prioritisation for the natural landscape over the framed artworks that would hang in art galleries. It was no secret that John desperately wanted to be accepted by the art establishment. He wished to be a member of the Royal Academy and he was 52 before that honour was finally bestowed upon him but he clearly did not want it enough to compromise or change his artistic vision. At the time, art theory followed a strong hierarchy which placed history painting at the top and landscape painting much further down. Landscape painters could elevate their art and consequently their careers by adding crucial details. These could include adding mythological or biblical figures Baroque artist Poussin recognised this in the 17th century. Constable, however, followed a truth-to-nature approach instead. He saw nobility in the more humble British countryside scenes that surrounded him, and he painted them as he found them, and filled them with his own evocative sensitivity for the landscape. To gain a better understanding of the landscape, John Constable paid attention to the nuances of the natural world, from the changing of the seasons, through to the impact of the weather. In his paintings, we can see this reflected through the attention that he paid to the sky above. Professor John Barrell drew attention to this when he described Constable as being the first English artist to represent the sky of England as opposed to some generalised sky. Others appeared to borrow skies from Dutch or Italian artworks. Constable, however, had painted his British landscapes with their own unique skies. During the early 1800s, there were many scientific discoveries being made, which had a big impact upon the direction of British art. In last week's episode, we saw how Herschel's research into the sun affected the way that Turner depicted light. The meteorologist Luke Howard's research into clouds may have influenced the way that Constable painted his skies. Luke Howard has been described as the godfather of clouds and he was the first scientist to recognise similarities between certain types of cloud forms and to give these distinct forms names. His essay, The Modification of Clouds, which was published in 1803, changed the way that clouds were classified forever. In addition to his groundbreaking research into this field of meteorology, he also kept a detailed record of the weather in London from 1801 to 1841, which provided valuable information. The flourishing field of meteorology seems to be reflected in Constable's artwork, particularly his cloud paintings. John Constable made a series of paintings which focused on the visual imagery above. Sometimes they featured small details of tree forms to frame the sky. Other times the clouds were the only element on the canvas. These cloud paintings are emotive and intriguing and show the markings of an artist who is both experimenting with forms and obsessively focusing on the aspect that he felt to be the most important element of a landscape. John Constable described himself as the man of clouds. This was not some small element of a painting to him but one that he was keen to truly excel at. Additionally, Constable felt it to be the most important aspect of a composition. The sky is the chief note and key organ of sentiment. It governs everything, he stated. 
This concept that the sky is the key organ of sentiment is an important one. Constable is using the sky in order to express his emotions. On the 23rd of November 1828, John Constable's beloved wife, Mariah, died of TB. Constable was devastated and wore black for the rest of his life. In relation to his loss, he said that the face of the world is totally changed to me. Following Mariah's death, John created this image of Hadley Castle. That he chose a ruin for his subject matter is a telling one. And just look at those fierce swirling clouds above, filled with the amber shades of a storm. If we look closer, we can see that the ruin of Hadley Castle is surrounded by birds. Their strong form upon the sky brings to mind a painting created 60 years later. Vincent van Gogh's Wheat Field with Crows, an image Vincent had created shortly before his suicide. However, in Constable's painting, amongst those symbols of despair, there is perhaps the promise of hope. There is that light that seems to be in the process of breaking through, and those patches of blue just behind the clouds. These elements could be suggesting that the storm is in the process of clearing, once more, it is the sky that holds the secrets to the imagery. Pictorially, the sun and the rain can represent those swings of fortune that occur throughout life. When these happen simultaneously in the natural world, then this is when we are given the vision of a rainbow. The sight of this phenomenon has always held great significance. In the Bible, the rainbow is God's promise not to forget his people. In folklore, there is the myth of the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. More recently, the rainbow has been a symbol for hope during the pandemic, and it is a sign that reflects our shared gratitude for the NHS during these difficult times. This beautiful and colourful form is one that never fails to inspire and mesmerise us. In Constable's painting, Salisbury Cathedral from the Meadows, he has depicted a location that held great significance. Salisbury Cathedral has appeared in previous artworks by John Constable due to his connection to the place. His friends, the Bishop John Fisher and the Archdeacon, also called John Fisher, lived in Salisbury and Constable had visited regularly. If we compare this painting with Salisbury Cathedral from the Bishop's grounds, then we can see that there are notable differences in both technical and emotional aspects. This painting offers an idyllic vision, a couple promenades beneath the sunny skies, whilst the crisply defined cathedral seems illuminated in the picturesque setting. In this painting, however, those bright skies have been replaced with wild clouds and the movement of the trees suggests a brisk wind is soaring through the canvas. There is a sublime quality to the imagery within this picture. And then there is the rainbow cutting across the picture plane and offering a glimpse of colour to the sky and with it its enduring symbolism of hope. This is not believed to be how the picture looked when it was first exhibited at the Royal Academy in 1831. When Salisbury Cathedral from the Meadows was first displayed, there was no mention by any reviewers of a rainbow at all. And it is now believed that this was because, at that point, the painting did not have its iconic rainbow. Try to imagine the scene without it. It would certainly offer a bleaker narrative. Apparently, the rainbow was added by Constable three years later. In a letter of 1834, Constable stated, I have done wonders with my great Salisbury. I have been preparing it for Birmingham and I am sure that I have much increased its power and effect, and I have no doubt of this picture being my best now. John Constable had increased the painting's power and effect with the addition of the rainbow, and in doing so had created his favourite artwork. The rainbow gets mentioned for the first time in the reviews of his Birmingham show, adding weight to the theory that this was a feature that was added later to the otherwise completed canvas. This was not the first time that a sky in Constable's art had been enriched by a rainbow. 
rainbows had featured in some other key artworks and they add a dramatic quality to the scene. There are numerous interpretations for the rainbow in this painting. Some believe that it symbolises the biblical promise made by God. Others that the way that the rainbow curves around the cathedral represents protection for the Church of England during a difficult time period. But one intriguing idea is that the rainbow may be a personal tribute to Constable's good friends, the Bishop and Archdeacon Fisher. In fact, the place that the rainbow ends is the exact spot of the Archdeacon's house, Leaden Hall in the Cathedral Close. So the rainbow appears to have been added later. Also, if it had actually been painted at the precise moment, then the direction of the light would have meant that the rainbow would have been facing the other way round, which wouldn't have allowed for the framing of the cathedral in the way that we see within this picture. Therefore, despite Constable's belief that direct observation of the natural world was more important than imaginative interpretation, when it came down to it, Constable couldn't resist allowing himself a bit of artistic license to his art, and he found the freedom to do so in the sky above. Mm.